Hello. So I have a friend who was asking me this morning about tallow and rendering tallow and tallow candles and tallow lamps. And I was explaining a little bit about how that works to him as he's going to be telling a story and part of it has to do with a tinker who fixes a king's lamp and this lamp um, that he makes for the king is made with substandard tin and so as it heats up some of the impurities in the tin um, open up as holes and the oil melts everywhere and so he was just curious about the logistics of these tallow lamps and so I thought the easiest way for me to explain tallow candles and tallow lamps would be to make some tallow candles and I happen to have some tallow that was rendered and waiting in the house and I have some wicks and I have some containers that I could make some candles in so that's what we're doing today. So tallow is the fat from typically um, cattle or deer or moose. Um, there's also bear tallow and the fat from all types of animals can be used to burn for candles. Now, bacon is a really great option because it smells fantastic, um, but tallow is preferred because it is the hardest of these fats. Um, pork fat is very, very soft, so it needs to be in a jar of some sort and it burns really quickly. Tallow withstands heat better and that makes it really fantastic for making candles. Tallow can be used to make taper candles, so I'll show what that looks like, or it can be put into jars. Um, you can make votive candles with it, all sorts. And it's quite hard at room temperature. Eventually, if tallow's heated up enough, it becomes oil. So in the dead of summer, uh, tallow candles should have some wax added to them, preferably beeswax, to keep them in a solid state if they're tapers. Now, tallow lamps are a little bit different. So a lamp would have been something like a clay pot with a spout. Um, the main chamber of the tallow lamp may have been open or typically would be covered. Tallow lamps can be made out of stone or clay pots, depending on what part of the planet you're on. Now these lamps and candles were found all over the place in North America, in Greece, in Europe, all over the place because they are so fantastic and they work so well. And because we have raised cattle for several years, we've had a great supply of tallow. I make tallow soap and also tallow candles. And you can see, it. I also cook with tallow. Tallow's wonderful, and I also make most of my body products with tallow because it's magical. So you can see over on the counter, I've just got our candles and tallow, quote unquote, lamp uh, solidifying. Uh, I'm going to show you how we remove impurities from a piece of tallow. I'm not gonna show rendering though, but I can describe it. So to render tallow, you're gonna get the fat either back from the butcher, if the butcher has been the one cutting up your meats, or if you're doing it yourself, you're going to have the internal organ fat, and then you're gonna have the outer fat that you would find along the skin, along the outside of the animal. And both of those fats are fantastic, but they're good for different things. So the internal fat is best used for cooking. It has the least flavor. It makes flaky, flaky uh, pastry. It's great for frying potatoes in, and it's great for body products. The outer fat, um, it has a stronger flavor, so I don't like to eat it as much. If you are gonna eat it, it's really for frying things, uh, definitely not for baking. And you can also make soap with that. It is gonna have a stronger smell, so you'd want to scent that soap. Um, and you're going to either ask for it back from the butcher ground, which is best, or cubed. And they might not be willing to do either, so you might have to do it. If you are butchering yourself um, and you're able to grind the fat, that's the best option. Or one inch cubes, 
are fine too. The reason for that is if you put a big slab of skin with fat on it to be rendered, it doesn't have very much surface area to let the oils out. So you want to increase the surface area of the fat so that all the oils can come out really, really quickly. Or what's going to happen is the pieces that are exposed to heat are going to scorch before the rest has rendered and you're going to end up with a really poor product. It's going to be really dark. It's going to smell and taste really strong and it's going to be really greasy. So the best thing to do is to grind it. That increases the surface area the most, but cubing it into one inch cubes is fine too. You're going to heat that tallow um, or the fat to render it on a low heat. It's really easy to burn oils. Um, I like using a crock pot when I have access to electricity. Uh, and if I don't, then just sitting it on the wood stove uh, raised up a little ways it does a great job of rendering also. And as the oils render out, you're gonna ladle it out and filter it through cheesecloth or paper towel. Uh, coffee filters work really good, that's what I use. And that's to get some of the impurities out because there's gonna be little bits of meat left in there. And what you'll notice at the bottom of the pot when you're done rendering it and there's no more oils coming out is a whole bunch of little meaty bits. Now those meaty bits are edible and they make amazing cabbage rolls. It's kind of like bacon bits, but not flavored the same way. So save those. And if you don't want to eat them, give them to your dog or your cat. They'll love them. Or make suet blocks with some of the tallow and some bird seed and those meaty bits and put it outside for the birds in the winter because they need that extra protein and they will love it. After you have rendered your fat, you're gonna put it into a bowl or a ceramic baking dish, something like that, and you're gonna let it cool. After it's cooled, you're going to unmold it. So you're gonna flip it out of the container and what you're gonna see on the bottom is a whole bunch of little specks that's little meaty bits too that made it through the filtering and there's always gonna be some. So what you'll do is scrape those um, specks off until you don't see any left on the fat. And I'll show you what that looks like because I have a piece that I have not um, removed the impurities from. And if you're really wanting really high quality tallow, you'll do this process twice. So after you've scraped it off, after it's solidified, you'll melt it again, put it back into a dish and let it cool, flip it out of the dish again, and scrape any bits off that you find. And you're gonna have really, really clear white tallow that way. A lot of people like to add some water to the fat as it's rendering so that it doesn't scorch on the bottom of the pan. And that's a good practice, but you don't have to so long as it's a low enough heat. So that's rendering. Um, I'm gonna show you how to scrape the bits off and then we'll get into making some candles. So here I have some tallow that I've already rendered and you can see those impurities in the top. So this one hasn't been scraped yet. So that's something that I'm going to have to do first in order to not have this tallow go rancid or go off. So all I do is I scrape that layer off and these bits. I won't be using. I'll probably give them to the animals. So all I do is just keep scraping until those bits of meat and sometimes there's water bubbles in here too from the rendering process. So I just have to scrape this all off until it's all gone. And I like to, when I render, <clears throat> I render all of my fats um, as soon as I get them back from the butcher typically. Now I still have some beef, or sorry, um, pig fat to render, but Usually I try to get it all done at once. Okay, so you can see that I've scraped um, all those little bits off. And now I'm just going to melt the tallow on the wood stove until it's liquid. 
and then we'll be able to turn it into some candles and I'll describe what a tallow lamp um, is and how it works. It's very similar to candles but um, has a dish that it would be in. So we'll I'll go out to the shed and grab the wicks and then we can make some candles. Okay so I have rendered the tallow. You can see it's all very liquid and clean and I've gone and got the wicks. So I have cotton wicks. Both of these are cotton. These are for oil lanterns and that uses a liquid um, oil to that this would be soaked in. Now a wick when it burns only the very top of it burns. Everything that's covered in oil doesn't burn. So with lanterns you have to eventually move the wick up as it does burn a little bit down each time. And it's the same with candles. The wick will only burn to the oil or fat level. So these are both cotton wicks. These are hemp wicks that I'm going to use. So I'm going to use a cotton large wick and then the small hemp wicks. Now these are, the wicks are quite fine and that's where the flame is. So the amount of light on the candle or in the lantern is determined by the size of the wick. So these would put off much less light than this would. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Now I have some beeswax candles that we made a couple years ago uh, just to show how very hard they are in comparison to tallow. Tallow is going to be much softer although uh, there are other oils that are even softer than tallow would be. So all I'm going to do is fill this little pot with tallow and it is very hot right now and then I balance the wicks on something else to keep them in place. So I'm going to fill this also with the tallow and this pot over here is going to mimic a, lamp, um, a solid tallow lamp. Um, now normally a tallow lamp would be covered. So part of it would be open where the wick comes out and then the rest of it would be covered so that um, the oil itself or the fat itself isn't burning but only this area where the wick is. So there would be no oxygen in the rest of it and then that part wouldn't burn and usually the there would be a spout off of here that the wick comes out of and the rest is covered. It also prevents any sloshing of oils when it is warm uh, so that they don't spill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the wick where I want it to be which is just a little ways up from where it is right now so that the wick is off to one side as though this was a lantern. Now all I have to do is let this cool down it's going to solidify back to a solid state. I'm going to actually grab a piece of tallow. So these are my bricks of tallow that I've rendered and they're very hard at room temperature. So not soft until like midsummer, then these would become quite soft. If I was to make this type of candle, a taper, with tallow, I would have likely some uh, strips of cloth that I would wrap around as I was dipping to help it hold its shape once it's warm outside. In the winter, this is they would be fine as tapers, but in the summer, they would get too soft and the cloth would help keep its shape um, during that time. So that's really all there is to making tallow candles or a solid fat tallow lamp. Um, back in the day they would have been made out of clay and or stone depending on where in the world they were from. So I'll show you what it's like to burn one in a second too. So here we have one candle that I made and it's all solidified. You can see it's back to being a solid and I thought we would just light it and see how it burns. Now it's going to take a minute for these wicks to burn down. And I honestly haven't used these hemp wicks very often. I had got them a while back. And to be quite honest, this is the first time I've burned a candle using them. 
those will burn down. And just like a regular candle, a beeswax candle or any other type, as the wicks burn down, it'll heat the oil and will that'll slow the burn down for the wick. expect it might be difficult to see on the camera but inside it's just melting a bit of tallow just below the wick and they're burning just like a regular candle